to you, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Tonight, the South African Development Community, the SADC, uh, is still holding talks on the political future of the Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe, who is still under house arrest. In this newscast, we shall be getting the reactions of some actors of the civil society, actors of the civil society, citizens in the country, as well as uh, supporters or members of the ZANU PF party, the ruling party in the country. Also, in this newscast, we look at the reaction of the Nigerian community and businessmen here in the country's economic capital, Douala, following the reopening of the Cameroon Nigerian border that is in a cock southwest region of the country. Those are headlines. Stay with us. We shall be right back. Once again, good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. Let's begin right away with the government of Cameroon that has decided to reopen its border with Nigeria, precisely in Ekok, a move that has been saluted by the Nigerian community and businessmen here in the country's economic capital, Dwala, precisely those at Mashe, Congo. Days ago, we were telling you here on Equinox Television how they were complaining about the huge economic impact of the set administrative decision, the decision that was taken on the 29th of September 2017 by the governor of the southwest region of the country, Bernardo Kaliabila. We got their reactions. Let's have the details in the following report. Few days to the planned independence protest in the two English speaking regions of Cameroon, the governor of the southwest region announced the closure of the territorial and maritime borders. The temporary move to Governor Bernardo Kaliabilai was to thwart all plans by what he called manipulators out of Cameroon to destabilize the country. Close to two months after the administrative decision, the government has decided to reopen land border with Nigeria in a cock. Nigerians in Cameroon who could not travel before now have said that the decision is timely for transaction and other social activities. We feel very, very happy about the opening of the border. It will help us with this transaction of this end of the year business and help us to go back to Nigeria for Christmas period and the rest of them. Dealers in fabric, jewelries, handbags and shoes who travel to Nigeria constantly for supplies paid a huge price. There was scarcity and price increase in markets. There was some goods that we were expecting to come in, but we did not see it. It made things to become uh, more expensive than today. But since they have opened the border, I think that things will come back normal. Mashi Kungu, in the economic capital, Douala, is inundated with Nigerian businessmen and women who were highly affected by the closure of the Cameroon Nigeria border since September 29, 2017. The border was closed on 1st October when we have Nigeria have independence. And since then, things are difficult, are difficult for the people to buy. And even so, we that are buying it in bulk, especially that we, we, are, we that are going to China to buy the, 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 the goods, we are, sometimes we feel like the world has destroyed. They said that they are now ready to pick up the broken pieces and resume business like before. We are going to start our business again fully as it, it was. For now, as the border is open, we are now preparing to travel before the end of the week. The, cam the situation between the Cameroon Nigerian border that has been reopened, we equally had information that the senior divisional officer for Manu Division in the southwest region of the country was expected to inaugurate the reopening of the Cameroon Nigerian border that was in the early hours of this morning. We remain in the northwest region of the country two years after the government of Cameroon constructed the Bu Integrated Health Center. It is situated in the Bui division of the northwest region of Cameroon. It has still not to be able to be a solution to local inhabitants due to lack of equipment and medical personnel at the center. The population have been covering long distances to get themselves treated in other neighboring hospitals. Katrin Kwan is going to be telling us in the following report that a local non-governmental organization reached out to the local population, but it seems just to be a partial solution. Her report. 
Health services in Bu, a locality in Bu's vision, has been applied to the population. The people had to cover long distances coupled with bad roads to get medical attention to neighboring villages. Before we had this health center, we are using the children at the distance of 2.5 kilometers to 3 kilometers. Okay. Yes, so that's how we have been struggling that time. <laughs> Sometimes when, 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 when people feel sick here, they use two wheelbarrow just to push people right down the object. In that time there was no bike or no vehicle, no moving of vehicle anyhow. Yes, the route was very bad. So we used the two wheelbarrow truck or we make a ladder and carry and carry uh, uh, people there to reach right the objective. The construction of the integrated center in Bo in 2015 by the government was not a solution to the people's problem. The health unit was lacking health equipment to facilitate the activities of the patients. Uh, in fact, uh, the center is still lacking much because uh, the are still lacking. And the center emptying that equipment, and I think applying to the government to provide the health center with some equipment. After two years of enduring the precarious condition of health facility in that locality, a non governmental organization, Shumas, got attracted to the building of the health center, offering hospital equipment and even providing a good toilet to the population. Uh, the health center was already constructed. But it couldn't go functional because there was no toilet, there were no uh, equipment in the health center. So uh, the intervention consisted of constructing a toilet with the lavatory and the, the placenta pit and uh, also uh, a couple of uh, beds, the delivery bed, the baby cot and uh, a lot of uh, other equipment for the for the, for the, for the lab and for the hospital. The handling of these equipment comes as a great relief to the community. However, the poor people have been urged to use the equipment jealously so the next generation can also benefit from them. We take you to one of the neighborhoods in the Douala Tu municipality, which is still having a village setting, that is Bois de Senge, located in the forest. As a reporter could observe, the area lacks primary roads and high crime wave is equally reported in that neighborhood of the Douala Tu municipality. Innocent Aze paints the picture further in the following report. Bois de Senge Quarter in the Douala II subdivision is characterized by underdevelopment components. Surrounded by forest, the quarter, which is gradually witnessing an increase in its population size, is marked by dilapidated road and other infrastructures. A big trouble to small vehicles that often experience breakdowns. Most of the inhabitants cover long distances on foot and motorbikes at times. Looking more of a typical rural area, persons of different caliber resident here. Reasons of high insecurity rate. According to these inhabitants, there is just a way in and out of the quarter. Armed robbers enter the quarter via the bushes to operate. After operating, they dash back into the forest. Bois de Sien's quarter is also situated in a marshy and risky zone vulnerable to floods during heavy rainfalls. The population channeled their pleas to competent government administrative authorities to help improve the well-being of inhabitants in the developing Bois de Sien's quarter. And infrastructural problems in Bafusam 1 subdivision when the western region of the country would soon be a thing of the past. It is the outcome of the signing of a partnership contract between the Bafusam 1 Council and a delegation of Lome uh, Susin municipality in France. Let's have the details of that report once again with our reporter in Onsen Aze. 
two signatures for a joint contract between the Lume Soussaint municipality in Paris, France, and Bafoussam 1 subdivision in the west region of Cameroon. By the signing of this partnership contract between Mayor Frank Veneur of France and Jules Hille Foka Foka of Bafoussam 1 Council, the French community prepares itself to accompany the executives of Bafoussam 1 Council realize some of its important projects. According to Mayor Jules Hille Foka Foka, it is important signing an international partnership so that the Bavosam 1 municipality can benefit from foreign expertise. The visiting Lume Soussien delegation to the Bavosam 1 municipality has agreed to grant a helping hand to redress the various infrastructural problems affecting living standards of inhabitants in Bavosam 1. Degraded roads, insufficient water supply, rampant disposal of garbage and intoxication of the environment, among other issues, are what concern visiting Mayor Frank Veneur and his delegation from France. After warmly welcoming the executive of the Lume Soussaint municipality, the Bavosam 1 Council prepares to receive in the coming days a delegation from Tunisia for a similar partnership agreement. That is Inonsen Aze, the reporting, taking us to news out of the country with the latest developments from uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's longtime president, Robert Mugabe, is holding talks with the South African Development Community over his future. The envoys from South African Development Community are now trying to reach a deal on the future of the president of Zimbabwe, the man who has led the country for 35 years now, since 1980. Zimbabwe's opposition leader is saying that Robert Mugabe must resign, but sources are suggesting that Mugabe may be resisting pressure to step down, insisting that he remains the legitimate leader of the country. The head of the African Union, uh, the president of Guinea, President Alpha Conde, has equally warned that the African Union would not accept the military Seizure, seizure rather of power. He equally said that he was inviting the army to return to its barracks and return uh, to constitutional order. And Zimbabweans are equally expressing mixed reactions on the political evolution in the country as we speak. Some want the president to step down while others are insisting that he should remain in power. Let's now have the reaction of some uh, citizens in the country in the following except. I believe for Robert Mugabe to step down is not enough. We need the whole Zanubi system to go because we believe they are the same. It's not enough for the citizens of Zimbabwe to change, uh, to, to, to have an, uh, 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 Robert Mugabe appointing an, uh, a successor, but actually the best thing for him to do is just to step down and pave way for a new dispensation. What uh, the first lady has mentioned about success, succession gives us hope uh, for the future, it gives us continuity, and uh, I believe it also gives uh, confidence in investors. We see how citizens in Zimbabwe are having mixed feelings as far as the situation is concerned. Now, war veterans in the country had earlier called for the arrest of First Lady Grace Mugabe for statements that she made in which she was insisting or saying that President Robert Mugabe had the right to impose candidates as far as uh, the presidential election in the country is concerned. Political analysts on their part uh, decried attempts to change the country's constitution to make a way to power for Chris Mugabe. We are going to be having an excerpt of a war veteran in the following interview. No, President says, no, 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 I don't want to impose any candidate. But I've always argued with him that you have the law, you have the right to be part of that process because we respect him. Saka, his way will be final. Mark my words, his way will be final. Other people were arrested for saying exactly what she said. So if the law is applied normally, equally, uniformly, she must be arrested. What the first lady was saying is that she's dreaming or we are fast approaching a dynasty in a dictatorship type of leadership. I don't think we would be instead of changing the, the constitution of the republic to accommodate a, a, a third vice president simply because of the ones to his wife, Grace, uh, to, to, to be the, the, the vice president. She can be the third vice president of the party, 
but it is very difficult for her to be the third vice president of the republic. There's a difference between the party and the, uh, and, and, and the state. Although we know that in terms of politics, in terms of Mugabe, since Kembez, there is party-state conflation. But I don't think it is possible for the national constitution to be amended in order for Mugabe to appoint his wife. We're going to be having now the excerpt of the youth leader of the ZANU PF party that criticized the military in the country earlier but apologized. And that was just a few hours ago. Let's hear him in the following excerpt. Apology to the Commander Defense Forces, General Constant Govea Chuenga, Commander Zimbabwe National Army, General Philip Valerus Banda, Commander Air Force of Zimbabwe, Air Marshal Perence Shiri, the Generality of uh, Zimbabwe Defense Forces and the entire nation of Zimbabwe. We would like to apologize for the statement I have made, made yesterday at the PF headquarters together with my executive. I, as the leader of the Revolutionary Party's Youth League, I have reflected and personally admitted that I had. I was ill-advised to read a statement which I and the Youth League had not originated, neither authored. The document which I read was handed it over by one wrote in Dangar Mbisi. First Lady Grace Mugabe is in Zimbabwe right now. The reports that she's out of this country are incorrect. Did she accelerate the events? She did. Contributed a lot. The rallies which were, um, which were being led by the youth, which are supposed to be youth interface rallies, which is meant to address the challenges the youth are facing, one of the major ones being unemployment. We're not doing that. The First Lady was addressing her own political problems. And hence, the presidents also appended political problems, not of the youth. They were being used to attack and undermine the army. As we could see, those were the reactions of the youth leader of the ZANU PF party in Zimbabwe and also the representative of the said political party in the United Kingdom. They're reacting on the current situation in Zimbabwe. That is what we are going to be talking about in the second part of this newscast. Stay with us. We shall be right back. As I said earlier on, the crisis in the political crisis in Zimbabwe, as we speak up to now, it is not clear whether it is a military coup in the country. The Zimbabwean president, Robert Mugabe, is still under house arrest. As guest, we are going to be having Ms. Michelle Ndoki. You are a militant or supporter of the CRM political party. I am a militant, you can say that. Maurice Kanto. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And on thank Talking you for Point. inviting me. Thank you once again. How do you perceive the current political transition, as I can put it, in Zimbabwe? It's inspiring, of course. Anybody who is a militant of an opposition party in this country might uh, say the same. It is inspiring. Um, we are not so much interested in the details or as to whether or not we like the way it is being done. But uh, what uh, strikes me as a person and what I believe would strike all of us is that um, we are listening to all the parts. We, we saw uh, representatives of youth um, talking about what is happening in their country and the way they are trying to shape the destiny of their country. And I think this should be uh, something we bring back home. We need um, in the crisis that, of course, um, it, it, um, we, we cannot help but relate to what is happening there because we are facing a very serious crisis in this country as well. And what we could regret is that um, we don't hear so much about the youth and what they think about what is happening in this country and what should be done and how we are trying our best to shape the destiny of our country for the best. So what um, is happening in Zimbabwe should be an inspiration to Cameroonian youth? Uh, it's is difficult for us to say that because if we continue that way, we keep uh, being spectators, you know, talking analysts, talking about what is happening elsewhere. Um, I'm not uh, young anymore, I would say, if you compare it to the, um, to the that is what bigger part think. of the community. <laughs> but if you, if you look at the bigger part of the population of this country, I cannot be considered as a young person. So I can talk about 
what we've been we've seen as sources of inspiration. We've seen Abdudu losing the election to uh, Mr. Ward in 2000. We've seen Mr. Um, Kereku stepping down in 2006. We've seen uh, Mr. Yayi Boni stepping down in Benin in 2016. We've seen Mr. Yaya Jame. We've seen Mr. Kompaore. We've seen uh, what is we've seen now? What is happening in Mugabe in, uh, in the country of Mr. Mugabe? And this is just talking about Africa. And, and I don't believe I've touched all of it. You, we could talk about Guinea, or and we have other countries. The thing is not so much do we need inspiration. It's really what do we feel about what is happening around us? What do we feel about? what is happening in the north, in the far north, in the east province, what is happening in the southwest and northwest, because this is where we should find a source of inspiration. Do we think what is happening in our country is right? And what do we want to do if we think it is not right, and for sure we think it is not right? What are we doing to change that? Some of the leaders of these communities are trying their best and we, uh, we strongly believe they should be given a voice because this is how we are going to get out of this crisis. You we'll have actually like cited a couple of African countries yeah. that we are seeing such happenings uh, uh, taking place there. We had the case of Burkina Faso, so we have the Central African Republic now, in, it is happening in Zimbabwe. Why is transition a problem in Africa when the constitutions are there? Uh, stipulating what is supposed to happen when, how, and at what point in time. Why is transition a problem? I would say I think we should stop focusing on why it, that is a problem because, again, that puts us in the position of spectators. Uh, we, th we should focus, and we are focusing in a way, on what is good about that. I'm not sure if you look at what is happening in Latin America, if you look at what is happening in uh, a, a, some parts of Europe, you will not see crisis in their framework of transition. It is always uh, difficult to f change a current situation. The thing is, there comes a time where we need to move forward. You cannot deny that in all those countries in Africa, there are very serious issues when it comes to Do how you, we live. What is needed to get out of the current situation? We Let have the continue. United Kingdom that is doing? demanding for election. The UN is saying that the army should return part to the president, Robert mm -hmm. Mugabe. What is needed for things to return to normal in the country? What is needed is for uh, people uh, from Zimbabwe to decide what is best from them, for them. Uh, I think, yes, we should take with respect and, and a lot of attention uh, opinions given by foreign countries and foreign leaders. But at the end of the day, who are we to tell them what is good for them and how they should run their own affairs? Um, I think we should wish the best. We should um, think about how precious life is and, and pray that um, the lives of uh, people uh, from Zimbabwe are, are preserved, as we, we should pray that uh, we, we don't continue to lose uh, fellow Cameroonians in the midst of this crisis. But over and above all, we all adults, uh, we all people who love their countries and the, the, the place they come from, and we should be confident in our ability to say what is best for us. Thank you so much, Ms. Mishendoki, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have you some other time again. Thank you. So I tell everyone, it was equally a pleasure having with us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.